So Intel finally released their new 10th generation mainstream processors to compete with AMD's 3000 Ryzen. Is really a 10 core 5.3 gigahertz processor gonna be enough to take the crown away from AMD? Or is everybody still pretty much on AMD's side considering what's been happening the last few years? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Tiago here with Classical Technology. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. Are you gonna upgrade to these new Intel 10th generation or are you gonna stick with AMD? Currently, Intel is on their ninth generation and that's gonna be the flagship 9900K, which even though it's outclassed in terms of thread count, it still is a very good gaming processor, easily hitting five gigahertz. It's an eight core, 16 thread processor. It still kind of remained fairly popular with gamers, even though AMD has come out with much better valued processors like the 3900X and the 3950X. So let's talk about these 10th gen processors and if it's gonna steal the thunder away from AMD or if you should be looking at maybe upgrading to these whenever they're released. So let's talk about the top five things that are most interesting and positive for this Intel release and five negative things that maybe we're not really looking forward to as much. Let's start with number one having a 10 core processor going all the way up to 5.3 gigahertz turbo boost is definitely pretty impressive now power draw of course it's going to be a little higher than normal but anyway it is pretty impressive having something like this i remember not too long ago in order to get a 10 core processor you had to get something like intel 6950x which was near two thousand dollars of course then came amd in a few years of ryzen slowly slowly etching away intel's crown and now you get a 3900x for as low as 399 dollars as i've seen that price you know micro center and different places i've had it on sale but easily you can find that in the 400 range not to mention the 3950x which is 16 core and 32 threads and it also has pretty respectable single clock performance as does the 3900x now, when you look at Intel's 10 core, which is the 10900K, you could say, why would I step down from a 3900X, which has 12 cores to this? Well, this is definitely gonna have a few advantages here and there, primarily being, being able to go to 5.3 gigahertz turbo speed, that single core performance is gonna be really great. And that's definitely gonna be beneficial in a lot of applications that take more advantage of single core performance such as this, as compared to multi-threaded performance, games primarily being one of the main things that are gonna benefit. And now let's talk about the first negative for this new 10th generation. You're gonna need a new motherboard. Now we're on the LGA 11. 51 where you can slap in a 9900k previously you could also put in an 8700k so intel kind of kept two generations going with that now you're going to need the 1200 series and that's going to mean an entirely new motherboard to go with your new cpu so that means you're not going to be able to easily upgrade and just drop in a new chip in your existing motherboard you're going to have to change out your whole new system and that's going to bring us to the second interesting thing about these intel processors and that's also gonna be brand new motherboards. As much as it sucks having to have the extra cost to upgrade your motherboard and your CPU, when you want to upgrade to something a little bit faster, it also means that we can be treated to new motherboards that possibly have new different designs. For example, I saw that there's gonna be a new 12th version of the Formula motherboard, which is one of my favorite motherboards. I have the version 11 right behind me with the 9900K. It's a really awesome motherboard because it has an EK water blocks VRM that you can actually pipe your liquid cooling to. And this new one, EK is even releasing a really cool little bridge that they call it to be able to go from side to side. So that's gonna be a benefit of new motherboards you'd get these new little things that for us enthusiasts that like the latest and greatest the bleeding edge it is a lot of fun you could always sell your old motherboard to upgrade to the new one there's always going to be some inconvenience and in cost but new motherboards often are going to bring newer technologies like maybe wi-fi 6 and things of that nature so there is a silver lining there i don't think it's completely terrible if we stayed on the same motherboards for like 10 years we would never get any new technologies, no matter what the platform is. The second possible negative aspect about these 10th generation chips is that they come at a really funny time Traditionally, anytime there's been releases like this from Intel, at least for the last few years, a lot of them have been almost paper launches. I mean, this has happened with AMD as well, to be fair. Like when they released the 3900X, you really couldn't find them for months. You had to scour different sites and really get lucky in order to be able to get one. And I think the same thing may possibly happen with this Intel 10th generation. 
not to mention that we're going through these world issues right now. It's going to make things even more complicated. So yes, it's been released on paper and a few reviewers are going to get the product. Maybe a few lucky people that order early may be able to get a sample or two, but I think it's going to be kind of hard to get these in mass quantities. And I don't even know if people are going to be upgrading to Intel in such large numbers, considering AMD has a lot to go up against it, even on the high end now. The third positive thing about these Intel chips, it looks like the prices are staying pretty reasonable. According to the spec sheet that I saw, looks like it's going to be around $488, at least that price that I saw. Generally, the MSRP may be a little higher than that, so we can expect it to be somewhere in like the $500 range or, or close to that. Now, for a 10-core chip going at 5.3 gigahertz, that's pretty cool. I mean, like I said before, to get a 10 core chip at a much lower boost clock, like the 6950X, you have to get a really expensive motherboard and a $2,000 processor. So if this is a quarter of the price, and it's only been a few years since that 6950X was around, it's a pretty reasonable upgrade, I would say. That's really not a bad price for a processor that's performing this well. Of course, the 3900X has been on the market longer, and it is 12 core, 24 thread, and it is gonna probably come in a little Bit cheaper like i said i've seen them for as low as 399 dollars this 10 900k definitely is going to have a few advantages over that like if you're gaming or if you really need very high clocks and then another potential negative to these new intel chips that's going to come down to the competition from AMD. Now, if these Intel processors were being released by themselves with no AMD competition, I think people would be very happy in general. Like you have a 10 core in the mainstream for under 500 or near $500. You have an i3, i5 with hyper threading, some of them being almost as fast as the previous generation, 7700K. So those really aren't bad numbers in terms of the pricing, but for it to get to this point, it had to be through AMD's push and competition in the market. So one negative aspect of these processors being on the market now is that at whatever level they are of performance and price, that's going to be tarnished a little bit by Intel's history and AMD's relentless push into the competitive market, which really in such a short time frame has really made them pretty much the front runner, at least in the mind of the enthusiast or the everyday buyer that's going and buying these chips. I mean, people are looking now at the 3950X or the Threadrippers instead of the Intel, like, 18 core processors like they used to before, or even the high end processors like the 6950X back in the day. Um, there's still always a market for like the 9900K. People still like Intel. It's not like Intel did something completely terribly wrong. They just didn't innovate as much for a few years and AMD was able to get in there. So that's something to think about, a potential negative to buying a chip like this. You do have to really factor in if it's worth it compared to AMD and seeing if at that price point it makes sense for you. Another positive aspect of these new Intel 10th generation chips is going to be that we can clearly see that competition is working. This comes down again. It's a point I've made a few times in this video. You need at least two large companies like this competing against each other, or else you're going to have year after year of almost the same type of product with very minimal upgrades, because if there's no competition, they can just reuse their same technology. They're going to make a lot more of a profit. Now, if they have to really scurry along and make a lot more advanced products, they're going to have to spend a lot more money in R&D and in different products in the manufacturing process. So at this point, that's a very positive. Whatever you think about Intel, they're definitely at least trying. It's not like they completely gave up. I mean, they're giving us a 10 core 5.3 gigahertz boost clock processor for around the $500 range. My opinion, that's a very good progress from where we were a few years ago, where it seemed like every processor was a 6700K, 7700K, nothing too, too different. 8700K was the first one that went to six cores. And of course, the 9900K, which I consider a very good processor, is really the one that started getting a little bit closer to AMD and Ryzen and what they were doing. And now having this 10 core processor, we're gonna see if it can do battle with AMD's lineup. The 3000 series is a little bit older, so we're gonna have to see what AMD brings in the 4000 series. That's gonna be very interesting, and depending on how it is and how it's priced, that could really minimize the impact of these Intel chips. Once again, competition. And of course, having said that, that's also a negative aspect you have to view about these chips going into them. Let's say if you're gonna invest in a system with a new Z490 motherboard and with a 10 core Intel processor, you have to think, all right, 
I get this, and then AMD comes out with a 4000 series soon after. How much better is that going to be than this? Because you know AMD is definitely watching. The last few generations, they've really been very, very competitive. Then you just sort of have to think, okay, maybe I'm a gamer or something like that, and I'm okay with Intel being this way. Maybe it's going to have better boost clock performance anyway, unless AMD does what they've been doing recently is having great multi-threaded performance, as well as very good single core performance. But then again, if you always wait for the next best generation to come out, you're always going to be stuck with the hardware that you have now because there's always something better coming along the corner. You just have to get the best possible thing you need for your own use case at the moment and then just wait in the future until there's a much more viable upgrade if it's something that you haven't really needed. So overall, to summarize, I think this new Intel release, it's definitely not revolutionary, but at least it's a step in the right direction in terms of Intel being more competitive with the features that their processors come better core counts, very exciting single core performance, and the price is pretty reasonable being around that flagship $500 range, and the other processors stepping down into the i5 and i3, they now all have hyper threading, um, and you have 8 core 16 thread and 6 core 12 thread processors, 4 core 8 thread processors, which used to be much more expensive at much more approachable price points in order to compete with AMD. So in general, it's the right direction. I'm always a fan of the company that's going to give me the best processor for the best price, best performance, best features, most reliable. And AMD has been that for the last generation or two. If Intel comes back and in turn, it's them. Of course, we like to try whatever really is the best and fits our own use case. But I think everybody should keep an open mind and see, okay, maybe Intel's performing well for a good price. AMD is going to come perform well for a good price. You just have to sort of see what's going to fit your best use case. And overall, this is great competition for us. It means we're getting much better products at much better prices. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. What do you think about these new 10th generation ships? And I'll see you on the next video.